Some men are tricked into believing that they are the fathers of babies that another man sired. They are purposely misled by their girlfriends or wives that they would never cheat on them, although some of these children bear them no resemblance. Other unsuspecting men are listed as the fathers on birth certificates for children they never created or met, just so the mother can get public assistance. The term for doing any of these behaviors is what is known as paternity fraud. Unfortunately, it is the men who get locked away when the women commit this fraud. Even if a DNA test proved, as Maury said, you are not the father. A man's hard-earned wages in these cases are garnished in order to illegally pay the mother for children she knows are not his. From the time the child is a newborn up to its 18th birthday, he can expect to pay one-third of his salary for child support, although he may never get to see the child he is helping to raise. Paternity fraud generally occurs on a regular basis when a man is asked to sign an affidavit for paternity for a child with whom he shares no biological collection. Presumably in such cases, it is the mother who is urging the man to sign the affidavit or birth certificate form. Now, in other cases, the mother of the child makes a claim against the man she says is the father knowing that he isn't and without his knowledge. Either way, she chooses to commit fraud. She is backed up by a legal system that refuses to confront the women who commit such fraud. Some courts, in essence, fear that if they stop the flow of money going to the mother to help the child, it will cause hunger or hardship to that child. Now, they just figure it is easier to cause harm and hardship to the innocent men whose rights are not honored as much as the women who would seek to do them such harm. Paternity fraud, in short, is little more than a profiting scheme for the women who are successful at carrying it out against the men. Now, many bleeding heart liberals who fight for the rights of the women who do such things insist that they do not profit from raising a child as a single parent. But I tell you, those same people don't question why that woman would insist on birthing a child into her already private hell, whether she had the money to raise the child or not. Paternity fraud is a nightmare for the men that are dragged into it against their will and typically lasts 18 years of their hard-earned salary until the child reaches adulthood. They can't afford it. Paternity fraud is the only crime in America in which the victim gets arrested for the crime that was perpetrated against him. Now, if a man fails to pay child support for a baby he knows full well is not his, he will be sent to, to a prison until he is well, ready to pay it, until he's ready to come around. It's sort of like somebody breaking into your home, robbing you, and then having the judge sentence you to jail in the place of the robber. A little backstory on paternity fraud for those in the audience who are unfamiliar with this evil workings. In paternity fraud, the father of the child may contest fatherhood only within a short amount of time after the birth of the child. If he is not warned of that time period, he is assumed to be the father by default against his will in the courts. Now, if after he is assumed to be the father against his will, he still has a recourse to petitioning the court through a DNA test to dispute a connection to that particular child. In this instance, he has even less time to prove he is not the father. And if these men do not know their rights, they can get locked into paying for a child as some of the most productive years of their life, even if the courts find out later that they are not the father. You see, courts rarely reverse the judgment on paternity as being in the best interest of the child, which brings us to the paternity fraud case which originated in the city of Dallas and the great state of Texas. Here, a man was in prison for failure to pay over $50,000 in back child support payments for a child that was not his. But this is rushing forward in the story. Let us go back to the beginning of how he could have even gotten hemmed up in the situation to start with. At the time, Mr. Barry Wallace was going through a trying time in his relationship with his girlfriend, as many men do, and they decided as a couple to separate for a time. Now, typically, when men are free from committed relationships, they behave just as if they were single. As his separated life dragged on, 
Bear began to have sexual relations with other women. One evening, Barry went to a bar to let off some steam. There he met a young woman that he was vibing with and the two left together to go to her house. Oh boy, watch out. The pair ended up having sexual relations over the next couple of days. Over this time period, they had sex twice before Barry decided this was not for him and he broke it off. Broke it off clean. Now as time went on, by his relationship with his girlfriend healed and they were able to live together once again as many uh, do and they became husband and wife. But what happened next will come as a complete shock to Barry and his new wife. One afternoon Barry received correspondence that he would have to start paying child support for a new baby girl that he had supposedly had with the woman he had sexual relationship with just twice from that bar meeting. You remember earlier I told you? Now wanting to be a better man about the situation which a lot of guys do, Barry decided to do something right and take care of his responsibilities. Now, at that time, the court summons for payment, uh, Barry was 31 years old. He was ordered to pay $600 a month to support a little girl born by a woman he knew briefly after they met at the bar in the year 2004. Now at first, uh, he thought that was, he was the father. He did not ask for a genetic test and was willing to pay the child support. But after a while, he started to grow suspicious of the mother's behaviors and the events surrounding the birth of the child. For one, the timing of the birth. The baby was born in a time and a period that would not add up to the sexual contact that Barry had with this particular woman. Secondly, the baby's looks as she grew older did not match up with Barry's looks. Finally, the lack of contact he was allowed to have by the mother was raised doubts. Now when he asked the mother for a genetic test later, she refused. And there was nothing he could do legally since he had already been adjudicated as a father. Now that is until 2011 when the governor of the state of Texas signed into law a new amendment to the child support system that would allow any father who would believe his case involved paternity fraud to challenge the birth through DNA. Thank God for Texas. Now this mattered not if the child was just born or 18 years of age. Additionally, this law addressed the fact that once innocent, these men were off the hook for any future child support payments. Thank God, right? Now, they were not let off the hook for the old child support payments, but they were saved from having the, them collected by the state. The state was not going to come after them for old payments. The new statute in an attempt to address such situations for child support. Now, traditionally, judges, like I said before, have been reluctant to hear such cases to avoid disrupting family relationships saying it was not in the best interest of the child. Now, if a woman gave birth while married, the husband was presumed to be the father. If a child was born out of wedlock, the child, the parent relationship was established by an acknowledgement of paternity or a court order, which I said Barry had done. Now, once the order was handed down, judges rarely revisited these issues. So after Barry married in the year 2009 and started a family of his own, he struggled to pay bills with his wages from a driving uh, truck for a living. He couldn't do it. Now, child support was automatically deducted from each paycheck before taxes. With child support enforcement in the United States, local governments have an automatic wage garnish from the system. There were times where he worked 40 hours a week and came home with a blank check. And that was really rough on him and his family. Finally, when Barry changed jobs, he stopped paying that debt because that garnishment didn't immediately follow him. Barry said, I refuse to promote my income. As the months grew on, Barry was ultimately charged with failure to pay child support and jailed in the year 2010. Now with interest, he owed more than $50,000 in back child support. For those of you who are unaware, unpaid child support has a 6% interest rate, which means you owe more money if you stop paying less of your payment amount. Now Barry was eventually released, but he still refused to pay, uh, fearing that the child was not his. He was jailed once again early that same year. Now while Barry was behind bars, his wife heard about a new law allowing fathers to challenge the paternity of the child in Texas, and she contacted a one Mr. Fuller. Now the attorney who pushed for the statute during the several legislation sessions petitioned the court for a paternity test. Barry took the paternity test from his jail cell and it was then analyzed by the lab. Lucky for Barry, right? 
The results came back negative as Barry being the father of the child in question and a judge terminated that relationship. That meant that Barry was no longer liable to pay the child support. But under the law, he still owed $50,000 in back support because the law is not retroactive. Now, though he couldn't be jailed for that debt, efforts could be still made to collect that debt from him. Now, Barry's lawyer contacted the mother of the child and asked her to, to reconsider the debt Barry owed. And luckily for Barry, the mother who this time supported his request for genetic testing told him she did not expect him to pay back child support. As a result, Barry was released from debt and he was able to go on living his life with his family in the way he saw fit. Now, oddly enough, no charges were filed against the mother of the child who falsely accused Barry of being the father for financial gain. Go figure. I don't know. For paternity fraud, this is Charles Rivers. We thank you for watching. And watch out. If somebody hems you up for child support and it's not your child, get it checked out early. Get the test. We'll see you again next time.